Welcome back. Did everyone enjoy lunch? No? Yeah, good. <laughs> so it's my pleasure to introduce Carity Patino. Patino. Um, he's actually um, uh, been working with me on the Mojito Project very recently. Um, he's a search and perf performance guru, longtime Yahoo, longtime champion of YUI, and um, it's been really nice to have him working on the Mojito team to kind of align those two projects together. So I'm really excited to have him show you guys what we've been working on on the Mojito side of things. So welcome, Carity. Thank you, Jenny. Um, so I wanted to do a different presentation. I wanted to talk about low-level stuff, more academic, JavaScript on the server, the challenges that we have there. But Jenny nicely asked me to talk about Mojito. So um, what I plan to do is to talk about Mojito from the YUI perspective. As a YUI developer, um, how can you use Mojito? And what are the things that you can get out of Mojito um, when you create YUI applications? Um, I don't have too much code uh, in the slides because the goal of the presentation is actually to um, to give you an understanding and and to enable you to understand uh, the thinking behind Mojito and why we decide to create such as product. Um, in other words, this is more like a sale pitch for, for a free product, but uh, in any case, uh, we will see. So the agenda that I have for a presentation um, really quick is to talk about YUI applications in its current form, how you use YUI for application really quick, then jumping into Mojito uh, for YUI applications and also looking into more of the architecture stuff within Mojito, the internal components. We know all YUI developers are control freaks. They want to know what's going on under the hood. Um, so we'll look into some of these pieces. Um, we will touch on Mojit, which is a pretty important concept in Mojito and something that we don't have in YUI today. And uh, I want to touch on execution context and, and configuration, which is also very important when you build product that need to scale uh, to different uh, markets and to different platforms and so on. Uh, if we have time, I will spend around five minutes doing a demo of the things that you can do in Mojito today, and then talking a, a little bit more about community stuff and how we can get some help from you guys. Um, so, but before jumping into this, uh, let me try to give you a little bit of context of, of why you are today before getting into Mojito stuff. So there are three things that you, that, that you have to do when you create YUI application today. And these three things are in the tutorial in the YUI, but let's just cover it really quick. So the number one is to define the seed file, and I put a plural there, might be mo more than one file. And you look into the tutorial, you'll see that as the first step, you just copy that, paste it in the page, and you're ready to go. Um, but if you want to build a product and you want to go the extra mile and you want to gain in performance and you, you really understand the library, then you do different things. And, and probably search is one of the pages that is one of the YUI application that is more optimized in terms of performance and loading strategies. So in their case, they use two seed files. Um, that's the kind of things that you have to do. You really want to go that extra mile that, that you need to gain the market. Um, the second thing that you do is to just choose the YUI use statement, which is um, the second step from the tutorial. You just decide which module you want to use, and then you, you, you do something with it. Uh, really straightforward. There is a third thing that we also do, and you start using it more and more when you get more knowledge of the library, which is using the YUI configuration. And for that, we have many different, we have been evolving over, over time, and we, ha we have seen changes in the way that we configure the library, but those are most of them, I, I think. Uh, the, 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 the probably the one that is more used today is just a filter to just tweak the library and say, I want to get the debug mode um, engine. And, but there are many other configurations that you will learn when you st uh, start using the library and you will start bring, bringing those to your application. Um, and there is a fourth thing that we also do when we use YUI for application. And it's just saying, I want to create a new building block. So 
So I use the YUI add statement to create my own building blocks for my application and potentially also using that to create or to bundle business logic. And when I say business logic, I'm talking about something that is really specific for your product. And we recommend not using the use statement for that, but instead creating uh, a YUI module that holds that logic because it's easier to test it and so on. So those are the four things that we do. Uh, and this is the example for the, uh, this is the example that you get into uh, from the documentation, the glass module when you look in the API for YUI add. So, um, and there is a, uh, at this particular point when you cr start creating those YUI modules is where, where things start getting a little bit messy. And, and, and few questions will arise for sure for anyone who tries to do this. Uh, for example, how are, go are we going to organize our files? Uh, or how are we going to configure our apps to be able to use those files? Or how to build those files? How to optimize them for production? How to push them to CDN? So there are ser a series of questions that we need to answer ourselves when we build a YUI application today. And, and the reality is that this list goes on and on. And I'm not even talking about uh, different form factors or, or different devices or conditional loading or even Node.js yet. When you start adding all these, there are way more questions that you have to answer. Um, so the reality is that we are on our own on this today. There are, there are no guidelines out there. You, there's uh, nothing out there that will help you to set up all this together and to move forward in terms of, of creating YUI applications. Um, let's talk a little bit more about the runtimes really quick um, and, and the different kind of application that you can create today with YUI. Um, there are four different type of applications that you can create, um, that you can build today. Traditional pages, which this is what we have been doing forever. Um, HTML5 applications, web applications is more uh, related with the YUI application framework maybe. Um, but just the fact that you have this page that can change the URL, can refresh some of the pieces and give you the sense of an application and it's really quick um, in, in a sense that you don't have to do the round trip to go to the server again. Um, the, the third kind is the kind of offline HTML5 hybrid app, and this, this is a long name. But in, in general, it's just the kind of application that you can build, that you can bundle into an application and put it in the App Store um, as part of the uh, iOS App Store or uh, Android Market or any other um, uh, kind of bundle that you can create with PhoneGap or any similar technology. Um, and then the final one, the fourth kind of application is the Node.js application. And the YUI library is an example of this. And we know that this is going to be big in the future. Um, so nowadays, when, when you try to build products, usually you have to create more than one application because you want to uh, target bigger audience. And, and we will get back to this later on to see the details. But uh, for now, we can say that we can group these runtimes by server and client. And Dave was uh, talking in the presentation about the test and how we group the test of the YUI library into server and client. And w when we say server, in this case, we are just referenced to Node.js. And when we say client, we are referenced to any runtime, any JavaScript runtime that has a DOM structure or DOM engine there that you can uh, use to create a UI. And you can manipulate and interact with the user through events. Um, so that's the differentiation between these two, these this, this four kind of applications. So let's do a checkpoint before getting into Mojito stuff. Um, so far we have four things that we can do, that, that, that we need to know how to do when we use YUI, and four kind of applications that we can build today. And the only exception here is that in the Node.js environment, in the runtime in the server, there, there is no seed file that you have to define because you use a node module for that. Um, and Mojito should be able to help you with all these different options. So let's talk a little bit more about Mojito for YUI developers. And at the bottom of the slides, I do have some notes, but don't pay too much attention to it, it's just references. Um, so there is a misunderstanding, um, even within Yahoo and the developers at Yahoo, um, 
And apparently, developers are getting confused between YY and Mojito, and specifically when it comes to build application, which one to choose and all that. And hopefully, we can address that in this presentation. Um, but in my mind, it's just part of the naming conventions that we have. It's just really confusing. So let's try to clarify that as well. So let's define the role of, of each of these products. Uh, YUI is a library of building blocks to create JavaScript applications. That's what it is. Um, and there might be some modules in YUI core library that they don't look like a building blocks, like potentially those that have skins and those that are more complex like widgets. But the intention is to really create very small piece of logic that you can put together to, to get to a bigger uh, a more complex uh, structure. And, and obviously, the YUI application framework uh, naming is also problematic. And we have been talking about this. And hopefully, we can fix um, uh, some of these naming conventions in the future. And in the case of Mojito, it is just a boilerplate framework for JavaScript applications. And, 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 I, and I want to be even more specific and say it is a boilerplate framework for YUI applications. And YUI modules are the building blocks to build those applications. And that's the way I see it. Um, and it is important to understand that Mojito does not provide any kind of, of building blocks. Uh, it just focuses on providing archetypes and utilities. And we will see these. Um, uh, during the presentation as well. Um, and, and this is probably a good time to start looking into uh, Mojito and the details about Mojito. So let's see uh, some of the Mojito architecture components just to give you a sense of what we have been doing. Um, so Mojito has five main components. Um, we have the Mojito CLI, um, we have the store, the core, um, the server, and client. Those are the five main components. Um, actually, the five components, we don't have anything else. Um, so I want to just look into details of each of them really quick. So the CLI, obviously, is the command line tool, the one that enable, enables us to use the Mojito command um, in our shell. Um, the store, and this one is really important, the store is an abstraction layer for the Mojito application file system. So as I showed you before, the four kind of applications that you can build, they run in many different ways, in many different uh, uh, run times. And it is important to have this abstraction because whenever you need to use one of these YUI modules or one of these elements that we have in our application, we need to go and get them. And, and the, the process of go and get them is very complex if you have to target all these different run times and different ways to do that. Um, and so this specific component uh, is just an abstraction for that. So everything that is a file, there is an element that you have in disk, including configuration, that will be abstracted by Mojito. Um, so the next one is the core, and we also call it dispatch engine. And it is just a runtime abstraction for logical pieces. And it is important to, to, to look into logical pieces. So we have these logical pieces that we have to create for our application. Wherever we want to execute those logics, it should have uh, be extracted to be runtime agnostic. Doesn't matter if we run it on the server, on the client, an iPhone, or Android device. It doesn't matter. Um, so one of the roles of this is to, um, to be, obviously, runtime agnostic, um, and also uh, to, to be able to um, dispatch logical pieces when needed. Uh, the server, obviously, is just an ODS uh, wrapper for, um, for YUI applications. And it, it is responsible for handling requests, requests that come in, um, and also calling the dispatch engine, the core that I mentioned before, uh, when it's needed to dispatch a logical piece. Uh, and the client is pretty much the same for the client. It's just an abstraction for different browser devices and so on. And it is responsible for initializing that application, things that we call uh, rehydrating the application when it lands in, in that particular runtime. And also is, is responsible for calling the dispatch engine when, when needed. So those are just general um, uh, structures that we have there. Now, one of the main goals of, of these 
um, is that the capabilities of each of these components could be potentially augmented. And we want to create just very small components that you can go and augment it, depending on your requirements. And we'll see probably some example of this. And, and the other goal is to make sure that each of these components can be used in isolation, which means that you don't necessarily have to use the whole mojito. You might just use abstraction for the file system, for example. Um, um, we have a couple of diagrams here to show the server runtime workflow and also the client. Um, uh, I will skip those for the sake of time. But um, they're pretty similar, and we have just uh, a little bit of changes here and there since most of the logic that you execute is actually abstracted through these five components that I, that, that I described. And the question that follows is, how can these components actually help us to grow our software and create software that's pretty big? Um, before getting into that, let's see why uh, the software will potentially grow organically. Um, so applications usually tend to grow organically by adding just more complexity, more logical pieces, uh, and eventually they just become legacy because it's so big that no one in, in the company potentially knows all the pieces and just become legacy and it's really difficult to move forward when you have that giant software that is continuing growing, especially when you have a lot of uh, uh, markets to cover. And in and, and the new era of mobile apps, what we've seen is that, um, and I choose Path, I think Path is a, it's a good example. They have multiple apps targeting different audience. And uh, most of the business logic and UI is actually the same between the iPad, iPhone, Android version, or even the web version that they offer. Obviously, they are using native. Uh, but why not using HTML for that when you can actually share some of the pieces? So some of the logical pieces can be reused across those different form factors and devices. There's nothing that prevents you to do that. But it's really complex because of the organization to be able to get to that point. Um, so how to define those logical pieces in such a way that uh, uh, it helps you to grow your software organically and over time? Uh, in Mojito, a logical piece is called a modget. And this is a really important concept in Mojito, a modget. And an application are just composition of those modgets that represent logical pieces. Um, here is an example of one of the apps that we have. Um, I highlight the logical pieces, or what could potentially be a logical piece in rec boxes, and I highlight one of them with the arrow. And, and as you can see, there might be a scroll view that you need to use. You have data that is coming from an API. You have other functionalities. You, you, you have to define the way that you load that content, uh, the way that you optimize that content, all this logic to put these pieces together uh, is what we call a module. It, and, and let me be clear, module is not a widget in his current form in the library. It's actually a more complex structure. It includes many more pieces that you need to put together in order to get to the point where you have this thing that you can put into an application really easily. Um, so in Mojito, um, the simplest application that we can create is just an application that have a single margin. And, and here's how you do that, really like the few commands that you have to use to play that application start from there. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about margins specifically, margins in, mo in Mojito. Uh, so a margin is an structure, a logical piece that can be shared. So if, if, I, if I want to get that margin and drop it into a different app, should be able to do that, should be easy to do that. Um, you can also configure that margin saying, hey, you know what, for this application I want to have this, this spec, this, this kind of configuration. Uh, it also should be able to customize it in such a way that it looks like something that is organically part of the application. So potentially the styles and the skins and all that. Uh, it, it also have to be, uh, nestable, you can use it in a more complex structure saying, I have these two modules that together compose this bigger module that is more complex. And it have to be mutable in the sense that it might have runtime behavior. So when you use it in your application and your application 
uh, is running on a different context, let's say slow network connection, it might react to that change in the network connection, stuff like that. It could be potentially uh, having very advanced uh, functionalities internally in the, at the module level, not at the page level. Um, so the, mod, the module structure is really simple. A module is a composition of different entities uh, in a form of CSS, JavaScript, HTML, whatever you name it. Whatever you can put in the file system is, could be potentially part of the module. And I mentioned all the assets in this statement because you can introduce your own kind of files that you want to add to the module structure and you can uh, define those kind of things in Mojito. Um, so a module is just a folder structure. And it is a fol folder structure that follows uh, in a strict naming convention. And let me repeat myself, in a strict naming convention, this is really strict. And we want to keep it that way. Um, so as you can see here, you just create a module, and what it does is just creating a folder structure that has all these files by default, part of the boilerplate that I mentioned before. So you just run this command, you get something that is, that it looks like a module, it works like a module, so it's just a module. And you can start iterating on top of it, you have tests, so it's easy to you just add the test there, this infrastructure is already created for you. Um, so how Mojito can understand that kind of structure and how can the structure be actually uh, increase or, or grow organically. So Mojito, uh, and, and Mojito, it all, it all boils down to a naming convention again. It is important to follow certain rules and part of those rules enable us to have registration process in Mojito to really understand what you have in there. Uh, so let's see that in details, uh, the, the, what we call the entity registration pro uh, in Mojito. Um, a module a, a in general will have three different, or entities within a module will have three different registration processes. Um, and it is important to understand each of them and, and why they are in place. Obviously we have YY, because in 90% or 95% of the pieces that you will put into a module is actually YY modules, nothing else. Um, but uh, in, in that particular case, obviously we use the registration process from YY. Um, and you probably know how to, how to do that already. The second one is the one that we call registration by affinity, and it is applicable for JavaScript files. Only JavaScript files will, will have this, uh, this kind of uh, information associated with each of these elements that we have, and it's used by Mojito Store as part of that structure that I mentioned before. Why? Uh, why we need that? Um, so here's an example of that initial module that, that I just showed before. Now, making changes to that module to introduce affinity into some of the elements. So I'm saying that there is a model implementation potentially coming from y.model, and this model was initially defined as server entity, and now it become a common entity, which means that it can run everywhere. It doesn't matter if it is agnostic. It doesn't know if it is running on the node server or if it's running on, on a, a device. Um, so by making changes in those files enable Mojito to understand better what are you trying to do. And uh, the other example here is the controller, which was by default server as well, um, now become two different separate implementations of the same thing. So now we have controller for client, controller for server, and they are supposed to be this, uh, to, to do the same, but the way we do it is different depending on of the runtime that we are running on. So it is important for us to understand what are you trying to do so we can make decisions based on this naming convention? Um, and, and this target, two different use cases, it's really quick, let's cover them. We have bar and bus, which are two separate YUI components that are server and client, and they all use the same foo component. So it, it is agnostic. You just say, I need foo, it doesn't matter if you're running on the server or the client, Mojito will go on and pick up that thing for you. And the other use case is, that foo as a common entity will try to use bar, and bar has two different implementations, one for the server and one for the client. So you just need to say, I actually requires bar, and you have two different implementations of bar. Um, so the uniqueness of the YUI module names 
becomes relevant only when you look at it from the affinity perspective, saying, hey, I'm running on the client. I need to load something based on my requirements, the definition of that YUI module, and it will go and get it um, based on that particular runtime. So it will look for client or common affinity, but server will never be used in that case because maybe the server implementation has different logic that you don't want to ship to the client, that kind of things. Um, so, and finally, the most complex one, and I will not go deeper on this one, but is the registration by selector. And this one is actually uh, more complex because it also affects not only JavaScript files, but CSS templates and so on. And it, it is used by the Mojito store, and it is used also during the runtime. It is really important to understand, so let me repeat, is during the runtime because we are used to have definitions that are fixed definition when we create those YUI modules. But what happens when you have to make decisions in the runtime to use different type of components? So in that case, we use what we call the selector. So it, 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 con the continuation of the example, like getting this asset that now we also want to customize it, saying I have a CSS for Every, everything except for an iPhone where I have a custom CSS for that iPhone. And, and the same for bindings or anything that you, that you can imagine, including the views, which is just a template saying, I, I, I do have a template for uh, when I run in a Windows 8 environment or, or something like that. And, and he, the selector reiteration just solve uh, this one use case that says, uh, I have this entity and this is not YUI necessarily. I have this entity that at some point needs to use something and, and that something will be uh, collected by the Mojito store saying, hey, based on the current context, based on the runtime, we will go and try to pick up the best option for you based on, on the definition that you have for those pieces in this particular case. I'm, I, I'm requiring bar, so I will go and get bar iPhone because I'm running on an iPhone. Um, and, and to give you a better understanding of this, during runtime, I might want to execute this routine that is called render, I'm passing some data, and I'm selecting one view saying, I need to use the view called bar. And at that particular point, the Mojito engine will be able to say, well, there are a few implementations of bar. And depending on the current context, which one should I go and use to get that view is a handlebar view, so let's pick that up. Um, so let's do a, another quick check. Um, so far, we, we by using Mojito, you should be able to grow your application by just adding more files and adding the correct naming convention for those files uh, and letting Mojito to decide which one to use at any given time. And, and, and it does that by using the affinity, the selectors, and the YUI registration process. Um, so Mojito con uh, execution context and configuration really quick. Um, so the selector is actually bring, on, bring, bring us to a different question, um, which is how all these things are uh, executed by Mojito. Um, so Mojito uses what we call the y Yahoo configuration bundle, or, or, call, or we call it YCB, and, and it's also open source. We open source it recently. And this YCB implementation, what it does is basically um, uh, enable Mojito server and client abstraction uh, to take care of resolving internal uh, elements and internal uh, entities in a module based on the actual context and the configuration when needed. So um, in other words, any JSON file that you drop in your application um, will be processed by Mojito using this YCB configuration. And in this example here, as you can see, the red arrows are highlighting the settings block. So a configuration is just a list of different type of settings. And each of these has uh, what we call the selector. And this is, in this case, the, the, the top one is master. The other one is environment dev. So when we run in development environment, we actually want to have a custom YUI configuration saying, I want to, to, to get combined set to false, so I, I don't want to have all these huge combo when I'm doing development. So that kind of things. Um, and whenever you ask for a particular value, Mojito 
and specifically the Mojito core implementation will, will just go and get the right value depending on the current execution. Um, another example is that each module, and as I mentioned, modules are logical pieces, they will also have um, configurations built in in the module. So you can have configuration at the module level. And this is an example of it. I'm, I'm saying here, uh, I, I have two blocks, two settings, and one of them is targeting Canada, the other one is targeting Spain. And when I'm running on, on the Canada context, I want to use this URL for mail, the one that is highlighted with the blue arrows. And when I run in for Spain, I actually get the other, the other value. And when it comes to Mojito and using YUI structure for that, I'm just saying this is a controller implementation, by the way, and just have a way to access those configuration easily. So there is no hazard there. You don't need to worry. Uh, you can focus on creating those configuration and you just get values when, when, they, when they are needed. So in this particular case, I have this implementation that says, uh, whenever you execute an action that is called action name, um, I have access to this action context and this action context uh, will give me access to collect module configuration by saying I just need a config mail and it will give you the mail depending on the uh, specific uh, runtime that, that, that this code is being executed. And if I want to get application configuration, I can also say, just give me the application configuration. I want to know what's the configuration of YUI in this particular case, which was combined equal false if you are running on development mode. Um, and Mojito provide easy access to this action context, so you, you have access to th those kind of things. Um, so as you can see, uh, Mojito does a heavy listing. Uh, it, it actually uses a lot of configuration or enables you to use a lot of configuration in a form of JSON format, JSON files. And configuration files are really good in order to enable you to grow the software because it's easier to have configuration that actually have different code path in, in, your, in your YUI module saying, conditions and Eve and all that. And obviously, those files will allow Mojito to make assumptions as well. Because we have this strict naming convention that allows us to make assumptions for you and resolve things for you that you don't really need to worry about in your code, keep your code clean. And, but still, you can get in control whenever you want. So another example is that Mojito will make assumptions when it comes to loading YY in a client runtime. And one of these assumptions is the zip file, the one that I talked about at the beginning of the presentation, saying you, I need to have a zip file in my application so I can boot YUI in that runtime. And Mojito can make those assumptions for you, but you can also get in control. Um, so um, in this particular case, we have, this is the, actually the default one, the one that we have internally. We're saying I need the YUI base, I need the YUI loader base, uh, YUI, loader YUI tree, which is the metadata for YUI. But also I have these two special ones that are just Mojito synthetic uh, files that we built on runtime whenever we need to really understand what you have in your application by saying, I have all these files that I just created for my application so Mojito can understand those files and create the metadata for you. There's no need for you to start creating all these metadata that, could be potentially complicated. Um, and, and the same happens for, um, you want to be more specific and say, hey, you know what? I want to have my own seed files, and I also want to uh, use seed files that are more specific because it performs better on a mobile. Like in this example, we're saying, hey, I really want to use YY3, uh, the metadata for YY3, but I want that metadata to be resolved ahead of time so there is no uh, computation when it runs in the client. And this is a new feature that Dave introduced a while ago by saying, you know what, these are all the modules, let's go and resolve, let's go and, and do the uh, recursive execution, expand all that into a huge metadata, but that huge metadata is better for mobile apps because in that particular case, you don't really need to do expensive execution whenever you need to use a module. You say, I need this module. It already have that expanded, so it knows exactly how to build up that combo loader. So that kind of things that enable you to actually go that extra mile, 
Mohit already will do that for you because he can understand all the things that you have in your application, so it's easier uh, to rely on, on Mojito for that. Um, so let's do another quick check. At this point, you have control over the SIG file. You can customize it, but you can also use those extra features that Mojito use on top of, of, of what uh, Dave created for YUI loader. And obviously, you have full customization of the YUI config uh, with the example that I show you. So I want to do a quick demo, and I think we have time for it. Um, we'll see. This is kind of confusing looking. Um, OK. So I will go. I already have Mojito installed and all that. Um, I will not go into too much details about it. Assuming that you already have Mojito and the click ready, I will do just Mojito create an application that is called demo. And it will go and create that for you. So you get into demo, you have a few things there. Um, as I mentioned, the easier, or the simple app is just an application that has a single margin. So for that, we will just do mojito create margin, and we will call that margin foo. That's it. And, and basically, what we have is just a new foo folder that has that structure that I mentioned during the presentation, actually the same that, that was in the previous slides. And at this point, what we can do is just saying, you know what, I want to just run the server. Uh, it's supposed to be running the server on that particular URL. Um, so I have it already here. And that, oops, eee, foo, lowercase. Okay. And if you look at the source of that, um, it's just simple HTML fragment. There's nothing there. It's just module that does pretty much nothing. Um, so let's get back to that. And let's actually break to here and bring Sublime. Um, so as you see here is the same structure that I showed before. A lot of things that are already in place for you. Um, for now, let's just uh, do a few things that you can, um, that you can actually uh, do with Mojito. As I mentioned in here, we have this URL that is just a fixed URL when you don't have routes or anything to access your application and is a way to access specific module directly. Um, but let's do some real stuff here. Um, the first thing that I will do is just going into the route and add this particular route. I think I have it in my clipboard. No, maybe not. Well, just a route uh, really quick. Uh, this is very confusing. That's the path for it, and it will just execute an action that will be a frame, and it will call the index on that frame. Simple. Um, you can look into the documentation for that really quick, and then we will go and define that frame here, saying this frame is actually uh, specific type of module, and this is a built-in module that we have today. Um, so I'm just doing the module here. I will have some configuration for it. And I will say um, I want to deploy the client-side Mojito version, so I want to deploy that thing because we want to get YUI in the runtime. And also, I want to uh, define what's the child module that I want to have in that application, so the, the, the module that we will deploy. In this particular case, that module will be um, all right, the foo module. OK. Um, so by doing this, what we're actually doing is saying, you know what, I want to get YUI in the runtime. So whenever we refresh this page, well, actually the URL is now the root. So we have a lot of stuff here. And this is all YUI. What we're getting here is the SIT file, the one that I mentioned, 
that Mojito can make that sanction for you. You get some CSS and all that. And then you have, obviously, the YUI user statement with some things that Mojito will try to figure out for you. And you have full control of all these, but, but uh, this is what we boil the plate for you. This is what gets you running right away. Um, so by doing this, uh, we can obviously get into this kind of, oops, let me remove this here. We get the console here. We obviously have YUI here. We also have Y, we have Y Mojito. Those few things that will let you uh, run few things. So what, what's next when, when we do YUI applications? Uh, obviously, we want to um, go on and define new, new modules. And for that, what you do here is I want to define a new module at the top folder. So I, I, I have to define this structure that says whatever we put here is just a YUI module. And whenever you create these modules, you just have to define the file, the name of it, obviously. Um, the affinity, which is also important. And, and then you YUI config. YUI com plan. We have no version and we have potentially a required. Let's just put JSON um, parse. And in the function, we can do whatever we want there. It's just YUI. Why that? Whatever. And actually, let's let's put something here. Uh, message. Some kind. Okay. So by doing that, what we are actually doing is just introducing a new YUI module that we can use at any given time. So boilerplate will take care of. Uh, enable you to, oops, <laughs> why, why, it's missing here, okay. What I have now is that I can actually use uh, why saying I, I really want to use that why, why conf file that I just created. Actually, I forgot to make this development mode. And for that, let's use this. So why do I use in a form of why do I conf? All right, so you should be able to boot things around. And you can do this at any given level. So you can do it at the app level, you can do it at the module level, you can start introducing YUI modules there. And this module is available here because I actually say that this is actually affinity common. If I remove the affinity saying server, it will never be landed in the client side. Um, so that kind of things. Um, to, to, and to, to give you more details about the configuration really quick, one of the things that you can do in the application JSON is by saying, you know what, I want to have my YUI configuration. Exactly the same configuration that you can define in your application. But in this particular case, it will allow you to um, just have any kind of uh, config. I can say I want combine to be false, which is the one that I just showed you in the presentation. And just by doing that, automatically it will go and resolve a few things. But before getting into that, you see in the network panel here, if we refresh this application, the old version, you see there are two different combos. The combo for the app, the combo for YUI. So it, it does all this combo for you already. You don't have to worry about that kind of things. And then you can go and push those into CDN and just saying, this is my CDN combo, stuff like that. Um, and the last changes that I just made, if I restart the server here, 
you will start getting kind of com uh, combo d disabled. So now everything is just files that are being loaded from the Mojito app that is running on the server or the local. And one last thing, um, you can actually get this application by saying Mojito build HTML5 app in this particular folder. And for those that are using phone app, they know that www means. And what it, what it does here is just creating this folder that has everything that you need to go and put it into your bundle for using this application into a iOS, for example, if you use phone app. So that kind of things are already built in in Mojito. You really have the ability to do all this um, thing. So let's get back to the presentation really quick to summarize the other things. Um, so at this point, um, we have the ability to cover all the options that I mentioned at the beginning. And so I want to give you a little bit of overview how to extend actually Mojito. Um, so Mojito embraced NPM to enable what we call software composition. So uh, in other words, that means that uh, you can start creating those modules and pushing those modules into your NPM register. It could be the external register, it could be the, the internal register that you have in your company. And then uh, creating applications should be just getting those MP NPMs together and put them all together, and it should be able to, to get you running. How you do that? Just by saying, hey, in my package.json, I want to set up a specific session saying, this is a Mojito bundle, and Mojito will be able to understand that. And uh, so here's an example of that. I have my application, I go to my application, install a new module that is called Trendy Now. So automatically, you're, you're, you should be able to use that in your application. And from the application point of view, the good thing is, is that we actually have no distinction between a module that you create or a module that you install. And this is because of the store that I mentioned before. The store will be able to abstract that uh, since it's just a file system structure and you don't know about the file system. You, never, you should never actually define where to go and get something in your code. You just reference that and let the store to figure that out for you. Uh, so by flattening that structure, that means that you can have NPM modules that represent modules or just modules that you create for your application. Uh, and Mojito also embraces NPM to support bullet plates, extensions, and add-ons, which is something that we want uh, to, uh, to do in the near future by saying, for example, I just want to enable SAS for my Compass CSS. In my application, you just say NPM install Mojito SAS, and that should be able to get you running without any hazard. And that one, I didn't get the time to push it, but Shaker is, is already in NPM, so you can use it to productionize all the, the code that you have, CSS, JavaScript, everything will be minified, will be sent to CDN, and you go and get it from it. Um, so that's the kind of things that you can do. There are five different type of extensions that you can create in Mojito, and they also correspond with the five, five components that I mentioned at the beginning. So we really want to enable you to extend all of these components. And, um, and, 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 you, uh, and one of the things that we want to ask you guys is to help us to build this, to, to help us to create those extensions and so on. Um, so we really want to provide solid APIs for people to just go and create new NPM modules for Mojito applications. Um, so Mojito today, one-on-one, -on -one, just the comments that I, that, that I just showed you in the demo probably, you can also test your application, you can get covers from it directly. Some of these are actually using Dave Glass tools under the hood, but they are just part of the CLI, so it's, it's seamless. And uh, obviously you can also uh, get a few more commands, like the build that I show you to build HTML5 application and so on. So Diego will be talking about Mojito tomorrow, and he will actually be uh, demoing some of these uh, commands and other things about Mojito. Uh, so Last slide, uh, we, we are using Mojito 0.5 PR4 right now. We are about to release 0.5, and YY is the latest version, so it's already bundled with, with it. Uh, Mojito for tomorrow, obviously, app framework integration, we are actually changing the Mojito client implementation to use those building blocks to enable you to use the app framework really easily. You don't really need to do much. 
just defining those logical pieces and it, the Mojito framework will take care of putting it all together. Uh, we also uh, shift our focus to performance. Now performance for us is paramount, so we want to get Mojito to run really fast on the server. It's really challenging, but we are getting there. Uh, obviously, we want to also create a bunch of different extensions. And last, one, one last thing, uh, you can go and get it from Git. Um, and all the code from the presentation is in this GIST, so you can go and, and run the demo. Uh, apologize for the demo because I have to look at and type here. Not that good at doing that. Uh, but that's all I have. <laughs> Do we have time for questions? Yeah, a couple questions. We have time for if you have any. Uh, for the section that uh, determines whether it's going to send, say, things to for the or for the client or the server or for style sheets like for an iPhone or iPad, etc., does Mojito handle the uh, UA sniffing automatically, or is that an extra code that we would have to write? Um, I, I plan to show you in the demo how to do at least the iPhone version by just changing the user agent, but I didn't get the time to get to that. Um, so. One of the components in Mojito is uh, what I mentioned, the Mojito client and Mojito server. The server can do a few things for you uh, by just identifying the request that comes in, analyzing that request, saying this potentially is an iPhone. Mm -hmm. And then you go from there, setting that in the context. So anything that is executed down there uh, during that process already have that context saying, there's someone saying that this is an iPhone. Uh, but, but at the same time, in the client side, you have more information. You can actually tweak that context, saying, hey, you know what? You say it's an iPhone, but I really understand this runtime, and it's not an iPhone. It's actually an iPhone Retina or something like that. So you can tweak that. So any other execution that happens after that point will have better context. It's the same for connection speed, for example. We don't know the connection speed when the request comes in. But once we land in the client side, we can actually add building blocks there saying, hey, you know what? We want to understand the connection. Just monitoring the latency and saying, this is 3 g connection. So let's adjust the, the context. So that's how modules in that application can really understand better the context and take actions based on those changes. Okay. Thanks. Anyone else? Questions? Oh. All right, I will be around for a couple of days, so. Thank you, Carity.